This video is about price elasticity of demand, where we're going to cover what it is, so it's a basic definition, and what's going to determine a product or product or services price elasticity of demand. Uh, we're going to show price elasticity of demand on a diagram, on a demand curve diagram, and then also look at the implications of different price elasticities of demand for firms and the products they're selling. So starting off with the definition then, price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to change in price. So if a business decides to increase or decrease its price for a product, how much of an impact is that going to have on the amount of that product that customers are likely to buy? And a really important thing with this definition is that it's quantity demanded, not demand. So remember that demand curve is plotted with quantity against price. So it's not the responsiveness of demand changes in price, it's the responsiveness of quantity demanded. And then the terminology we'd use when we were talking about products with different price elasticities of demand is we could describe products as having price, elast price inelastic demand if quantity demand is, is relatively unresponsive to changes in price. So maybe think about petrol here. If the price went up by, say, 10%, then the quantity demanded might only fall by a few percent. And we'll look at some reasons for why that might be the case in a minute. Uh, you might also have products that would have price elastic demand. And these are goods for which quantity demand is relatively responsive to change in price. So maybe, for example, gym memberships, the price might go up by only a one or two percent and the quantity demanded might fall much more significantly in response to that. And then also you could have products which we would say have unitary price elasticity of demand. And this is where changes in quantity demanded are directly proportional to changes in price. So if the price went up by 10%, then the quantity demanded would go down by 10%. Um, and do note with each of those examples, when the price is going up, the quantity demanded is going down and the same true in reverse as well. Now let's take a look at some of these examples then to think about how or what's going to determine how price elastic or price inelastic a product's likely to be. So the first of these might be the availability and closeness of substitutes. Now I just said that petrol is likely to be relatively price inelastic and I would argue that's because there are very few substitutes you could have for putting petrol in your car if at all. Um, you could look to public transport, cycle, get the train, but that's not always going to be possible. If you want to use your car to get somewhere, then you need to fill it with petrol. And so that's why petrol tends to be relatively unresponsive to changes in price. As a point of comparison, you can think about gym memberships. Uh, well, there's quite a few alternatives or substitutes you could have for membership to the gym. You could go for a run, play team sports, um, or you could work out at home instead. So the more substitutes there are, the more price elastic a product's likely to be. It's also going to be affected by the extent to which a product is addictive or a necessity. So along that similar theme, I would suggest that petrol is quite a necessity for people who need to get to work. Um, if they don't have any other method of getting there other than using the car, then that's absolutely a necessity. Uh, equally, you might have products which are relatively addictive, cigarettes, alcohol. They're more likely to be price inelastic because of that. Um, but products which aren't really needed, maybe gym memberships, you could say um, not such a necessity, they're more likely to be price elastic. So the more of a necessity a product is, the more likely it is to be price inelastic. Next one you might need to think a little bit more carefully about is that the expense of the product with respect to income. And so if you think of an example of this, if, if um, a banana that was originally 20p was to increase in price to 22p, I would probably argue that's not really going to affect too many people's consumption habits. They're not going to go off buying other things instead um, if they're currently purchasing bananas just because the price has gone up by 2p. That's a 10% price increase on that product. Um, if you think about uh, people who are maybe thinking about buying a car for £20,000, for example, and that car goes up to £22,000, I would probably suggest they're more likely to rethink that buying decision. Well, that's a 10% price increase as well. So proportionally, it's the same price increase, but 
the, that 10% price increase has had a much bigger impact on consumers that are considering buying the car than it does on consumers who are considering buying the banana. So for that reason, I would say the higher the proportion of income the purchase takes, the more likely it is to be price elastic. The, the bigger the impact of a change in price is likely to be on quantity demanded. And finally, we've got time period. And so again, think about a different example here. Maybe you've got a pipe leaking in your house um, and you need a plumber. You've got no time to consider the options. Uh, you need him today. And so you're basically going to pay what it takes to get a plumber out um, in the next 24 hours or so to fix that leaking pipe. Um, compare that to if you're just refitting your kitchen and you've got a long time to think about it, you're going to shop around, uh, you're going to be a lot more price conscious and look for the best deal. And so the more time you've got to make that decision, uh, the more responsive you are going to be to any change in price and therefore the more price elastic that demand is likely to be the longer the time period that's involved. So when we drew our demand curve diagrams, we just said that the demand curve would have a downward slope. And what we didn't consider, though, was what's going to affect the gradient of that slope. And that's where our price elasticity of demands going to come in. So if we first think about the gradient of the slope of the demand curve when demand is relatively price elastic, um, in that case, a change in price is going to have a really significant impact on quantity demanded. So if you look at how the diagram works here, initially maybe we're at this price point here and we could read off our quantity demanded off the diagram here. And then a relatively small increase in price because of the gradient of that curve is then gonna have really quite a significant impact on the quantity demanded. And so that might be, for example, our gym memberships. And compare that to the situation where we've got relatively inelastic demand. So that's where price changes have quite a small impact on quantity demanded. And you can see how that's gonna be different with the gradient of the curve here. So if we were to read off a relatively similar increase in price along that axis, it's actually gonna have quite a small impact on the quantity demanded. So that would be our demand maybe for petrol, where, um, quite a significant increase in price doesn't affect uh, the quantity demanded by too much. You might also just want to think about these theoretical extremes as well. So these are really unlikely to exist in the real world, but we would talk about demand being perfectly elastic um, if even the most fractional increase in price would lead quantity demanded just to drop absolutely to zero. And in that case, you would have this horizontally shaped demand curve. So price even increases by a fraction, quantity demanded straight away drops right to zero. And at the other end of that scale, you could also have perfectly inelastic demand where it actually doesn't matter how much the price changes, the quantity demanded remains exactly the same. And so in that situation, you would have a vertical demand curve. But those situations are really, really unlikely, if not completely impossible in the real world. They're just kind of theoretical extremes for us to make comparisons um, with our diagrams that show more realistic situations showing demand being relatively inelastic or relatively price elastic. The formula for calculating price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. And that will give you a coefficient which will always be negative. And the reason for that is because if the percentage change in price is positive, so if price increases, then the quantity demanded is going to decrease. Um, and if the percentage change in price is negative, so if the price decreases, then the quantity demanded is going to increase. So that will always give us a negative coefficient for our price elasticity of demand. Um, and we would interpret that coefficient in the following ways. So if that coefficient was less than negative one, and what I mean by that is less than negative one on the number line, so a number which is greater than one, I suppose, is the other way of looking at that. So negative two, negative three, negative four, et cetera, um, then we would call that price elastic. And the reason for that is because 
that means that this number here, the percentage change in quantity demanded, would have to be greater than the percentage change in price. So that change in price has had a big impact on quantity demanded, and that's what we mean by price elastic. So less than negative one, price elastic. If it's between zero and negative one, then we say that is price inelastic. So that would require the quantity demanded, the change in quantity demanded to be smaller than the percentage change in price. And that's what we mean by price inelastic demand. Um, and the closer it is to zero, uh, the more price inelastic that would show. Unitary would have to be equal, exactly equal to negative one. And what would be showing there would be, for example, a 10% increase in price leading to a 10% decrease in quantity demanded. So that kind of perfectly proportional relationship. Uh, perfectly elastic uh, would be negative infinity. So that's our kind of theoretical extreme. So that's any change in price would lead to kind of an infinite change in quantity demanded. So negative infinity would be perfectly elastic. And then perfectly inelastic, the other theoretical extreme would be zero. So um, any change in, um, in price uh, would have no impact at all on quantity demanded. And so if you've got zero at the top of this formula, then zero divided by anything would be zero. And so that would show perfectly inelastic demand. And I think a good time for you maybe just to pause and have a look or have a go at this example, or calculate the price elasticity of demand, and then could you interpret it by those rules? So what we would do with this information is we would first need to calculate the pe percentage change in quantity demanded. So we've got these 2000 holidays and as a result of the price change, um, the price changing, the holidays uh, demanded has gone down to 1500 holidays. So to work out that as a percentage change, we'd need to do the difference. So the change which is 500, negative 500, because it's decreased, divided by 2,000, what it's changed from, times 100, which would give us a 25% decrease in quantity demanded. You then need to do a similar calculation to work out the percentage change in price. So the price has gone up from 500 pounds to 560 pounds, um, so the change is 60 pounds, and it's an increase this time, So plus 60 divided by 500, which is what it's changed from, and times 100, which will give us a 12% um, increase in price. And then we punch that into our price elasticity of demand formula, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. And so we've got a 25% decrease in quantity demanded divided by a 12% increase in price. And that gives us our coefficient for price elasticity of demand of negative 2.1, which we would interpret as being price elastic. And now that we've done those calculations, I just want to go back to the, this idea of price elasticity of demand and the actual demand curve. So we said before that a steep gradient of demand curve would show relatively inelastic demand. A shallow gradient of demand curve would show relatively elastic demand. And so you might be thinking that a demand curve sort of somewhere in the middle of those two would therefore show unitary demand. But it's not quite that simple. And actually, we're going to show here that price elasticity of demand will vary along that straight line demand curve. And we can prove that with um, some figures and calculations here. So if we were to look at um, some contrasting examples of price changes, so maybe moving from 10 pounds to 20 pounds, along this straight line demand curve, that leads to a decrease in quantity from 400 to 300. And this movement from 40 pounds to 30 pounds um, leads to an increase in quantity demand from 100 to 200. So you might be thinking, well, that's the same amount of a price change leading to the same amount of a quantity change in each of these two two cases. But we'll find actually the coefficient for price elasticity of demand will be very different in those two examples. So at £10, yes, the price increases by £10, from £10 to £20, but in that case, that is a 100% change in price. From £10 to £20, price has increased by 100%. And that leads to this 100 
um, unit decrease in quantity, well, that is a 25% decrease in quantity demanded. So if you do minus 25 divided by the 100% price change, that will give you a price elasticity of demand of negative 0.25, which shows that it is price inelastic across this range. Compare that to what we thought might be the same with the price elasticity of demand at £40. Well, that change from £40 to £30, while it's the same amount in, in pounds, it's now a 25% decrease in price, whereas before it was a 100% increase. And so we've got a 25% change in price here, and that 100 unit change in quantity is now a 100% increase in the quantity demanded. So the price elasticity of demand here at £40 is going to be minus 4, which shows price elastic demand. And then finally, we could look right in the middle here at £25, um, a £5 change in price here is going to be a 20% change in price and that would lead to um, a 50 unit change in quantity which from 250 units would also be a 20 percent change in quantity and so you've got here minus 20 divided by 20 percent change in price and so that is equal to negative one and so what that means is that along the straight line demand curve you will find that in the middle here that price elasticity of demand is unitary at this lower portion of the demand curve, price elasticity of demand is inelastic, price inelastic. And in this upper portion of the demand curve, price elasticity of demand is elastic. So actually, as well as varying depending on the gradient of the demand curve, you'll also find that price elasticity of demand varies along a straight line demand curve as well. And the final thing to think about here with PED is its usefulness and significance for a business and particularly in helping them to maximise their revenue. Now, the revenue a business earns is basically all the business, all the income that's earned by that business. And that's calculated by the, the price they sell their products for times the quantity that they're able to sell. And if you think about a product that is price inelastic, well, that means that you could kind of get away with quite big increases in price without having too much of an impact on quantity. And so in that situation, as a business trying to maximise your revenue, you would want to increase your price and that would help you to increase the revenue from your sales. Uh, the other side to that is if price elasticity of demand is elastic, then you'll find that even quite a small price decrease is going to have quite a big impact on increasing the quantity that you're able to sell. And so what you want to do in that situation is to decrease your prices and that's going to help you to maximise your revenue. You can see that in real life with, um, I think, really, really clearly with train fares. And so if you see them at rush hour, uh, they're really uh, highly priced. And that is because at rush hour, uh, the, the demand for trains is relatively price inelastic because people have to get to work. They don't really have any other choice, so they're going to pay that higher price. Whereas in the middle of the day and at weekends, you'll find more price elastic demand. And so the train operators decrease their price to try and get more people onto the trains and therefore to try and maximise their revenue. But just one other thing that they would want to consider alongside that, though, is um, costs and customer loyalty. So even if um, demand is really price elastic, then you can't just keep decreasing your prices, decreasing your prices until they go below costs, because you've got to think about the amount of profit that you're wanting to make, as well as just simply the revenue. So you'd want to consider costs as well. And equally, on the other side to that, if even if um, price elasticity of demand is inelastic, then yeah, if you increase your prices, then you're going to get more customers in the short term. But if you keep increasing them and keep increasing them, then actually customers are going to get quite annoyed by that. And over the long term, you might lose out on customer loyalty and they might start looking for, for example, other ways to get to work rather than using the train.